There is a dawning awareness among parents all across the country about the need for diversity in children's books. And a study that came out not long ago shows that only 30 percent of books published last year for children and teens featured a primary character who was black, indigenous or otherwise a person of color. Compare that to, to the way America actually looks. In the last census, 50 percent are classified as non-white. 50 percent of the children in America are classified as non-white. Now, children's books have always been described as both a mirror and a window. A mirror because kids need to feel seen in those books and a window into worlds unlike their own. That's important, too. We met up with author and educator Renee Watson at a wonderful bookstore in Queens called Book Culture, and she explained why the windows part is just as important as the mirrors. You have this girl who lives in Portland, Oregon, like me. So I connected. I knew those streets that she was playing on and the library she was visiting. You might say Renee Watson was a lucky young reader, growing up in the same city as one of literature's most famous characters, Beverly Cleary's Ramona. She was this girl who wasn't perfect. She made mistakes. She was a little insecure. So I definitely could relate to her that way. But Watson also felt a hunger for something more, something Ramona could never offer. You can love something and don't even know what you're missing. I didn't know that I needed to read a book where there's a black protagonist character. Well, kids have more opportunities now to find books about black characters and other characters of color, that change has been slow and not so steady. The fact that we're seeing the numbers of books go up now is a very good sign. But we've seen that happen before. KT Horning is director of the Cooperative Children's Book Center at the University of Wisconsin. The group has tracked diversity in children's literature since 1985. The publishing industry is still very white, and it caters mostly to white parents and teachers and librarians and, and ultimately children. A recent survey of U.S. publishers shows that more than three out of four people who work in the book industry are white and that disparity finds its way into the pages of children's books. There have been big gains in representation before, but after a peak in 1997, the number of new children's books with black characters actually flatlined and then fell to a low in 2013, before quadrupling in recent years, along with big increases for books about all people of color. I'm sure that there are people out there, I, I know some of them, they're tired of all the counting and all the sensitivity and all the paying attention. And it's, in their view, it's just a kid's book. What's the big deal? I think children's books are a really important part of a good foundation for living in the real world. Books have an impact. It's a great luxury to be able to say this doesn't matter. A good book is a friend to a child. It is opening up their world, of course. But it's also, I think, planting seeds in them that you want to nurture and grow over that child's um, life. Renee Watson has not only witnessed the surge in diverse books, she helped part. create it as a best-selling author. Her latest book, Ways to Grow Love, is part of a series about another little girl from Portland. Ramona Quimby, meet Ryan Hart. I'm really proud to be a part of a, a legacy where young people can read and find themselves and find other people and feel comforted and learn. Watson says she wrote the books with black readers in mind, but not only black readers. We want our young people to be critical thinkers. We want them to be able to put themselves in someone else's shoes. If we have a generation of white students who are either never reading books where they see people of color or are only reading books where they see us through struggle and pain, even the person with the best intentions, who's an ally, they're still going to approach people of color with this eye of pity instead of like, oh, I love that thing too, and I connect with you and your families like my families. And to develop that empathy, Watson says parents and teachers need to offer children a wide variety of books and not assume they'll only want to read about kids like them. I think the assumptions of adults do not necessarily match the realities for their children. Yeah, for sure. I also remember being in a signing line, I'm signing books, and I can hear a conversation happening between a white mother and her white daughter. And the daughter wants to purchase the book. Uh, she just heard me read from it. Her mother says, well, just, I mean, I don't know. Look at that cover. I don't think you're going to be able to relate to that. Wow. The child says to her mom, well, I can't relate to hobbits either. 
And <laughs> the next thing I knew, I'm signing that little girl's book. <laughs> Gotta love so kids. So true. Yeah. They'll tell you the truth. I love that anecdote. And speaking about telling the truth, uh, so on the idea that children's books are a foundation for the real world, I actually used the University of Wisconsin method and counted the characters okay. in Teddy's books. These are books that are basically new. Uh, he's only two. People sent us a ton of books. Take a look at the results. So we have about 50 books in circulation in my household. The big stack on the right is books that are about like inanimate objects, talking bears, mm. non-people. Mm -hmm. The books in the middle have white characters on the page or about white characters. The little teeny pile on the left, just three books of the 50, are arguably about characters of color. Did hmm. you buy the three? Or yeah, it's my question. Three? Gifts. Gifts. Yeah. Mm. And so... I mean, that shows you how you can be presenting to your kid a picture of the world that is not at all like what he will experience when he goes to kindergarten in Brooklyn. It's an important lesson. I, I, you know, I also grew up reading those Beverly Cleary books, Ju uh, Judy Bloom, and we were talking about yep. where the wild things are, uh, my favorite book as a child. Um, and I like what Renee said. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know if you're missing out because you've never been presented to uh, with it or you've never been given the book in school or it's not been a book that teachers or educators are putting in front of you to read. You're being introduced to other books that are, you know, what you're talking about, books that Definitely don't have diverse to characters. Think about. Yeah. yeah.